Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the Exxon is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. The X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All hit radio. To the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you would like to find out more about the Exxon Broadcast Network and the fine programming we have available for you, 724-365, visit www.xzbn.net. And for the Exxon TV channel, channel 21 on Simul TV, that's simultv.com. My guest this hour is... Uh, is with Dr. Shelley Kerr, and I've had the opportunity and pleasure of having Shelley on the show over the, pa- over the past 30 years a number of times. And um, she is considered one of the world's leading authorities on energy healing and mind-body medicine. And, and she explains that, I developed this process over the course of several years and believe the method is very relevant at this time in history. And we're talking about her new book that is out. It's called... Um, Edgar Casey's Egyptian Energy Healing. Now, Edgar Casey, who uh, was with us from 1877 to 1945, was known as the world's greatest psychic. He gave over 14,000 readings on health, past life, and earth changes. His information is still valid today and is promoted, preserved by the Association for Research and Enlightenment in Virginia Beach. During his life, Casey went deep into trance, and uh, the source he channeled reported on Casey's past lives in ancient Egypt as Rata, the high priest. In life readings, Casey left detailed information about life in the healing temple and methods that we can use to raise our vibrational frequencies. 
Now, Dr. Shelley Kerr was chosen by the ARE to organize their massive collection of Casey readings into a single book, resulting in a totally new and exciting healing technique. Well, once again, Exxon Nation, my guest this hour is Dr. Shelley Kerr. And for more information on uh, Dr. Kerr, visit her website at pastlifelady.com. And Dr. Shelley Kerr, welcome back to the Exxon. It has been way too long. It has, Rob. It's great to be back. Oh, well, congratulations on yet another book. Uh, how many books have you written all told, Shelley? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. At least 30. Oh, I don't know. Oh, my gosh. I don't well, really keep track, I guess. Uh, Shelley, where did your interest in Edgar Casey come from? Um, many years ago, because I've been unbelievably out here doing this since 2000, which is un- it's just hard to believe it's been almost 20 years now. Um, I'm friends with Dr. Raymond Moody, and him and I did a lot of traveling mm-hmm. and different seminars together, and he introduced me to the people at Edgar Casey's Association for Research and Enlightenment. And we became friends. They gave me some of their books. I gave them some of my books. And back in the day, they gave me a copy of a very small book that was published in the 60s about some of the gemstones that Edgar Casey had mentioned in the life readings. Mm-hmm. So I took the book to Tucson. And when I came back, I called my friend over there and I said, hey, you know, does anybody need to update this? I, this is put out in the 60s. And literally the day before I called... They had been in the conference room holding the book up saying, hey, we need to get somebody to update this. Wow. And so I updated it, and I put uh, my first book out with them in 2005, another one in 2015, and then this latest one that just came out a couple of months ago. Edgar Casey's connection with Egypt, um, apparently he was the, uh, the high priest? Yes. When Casey went into trance... Mm-hmm. Um, the so- we, they call it the source, right. which is the being, let's just say, that he channeled, gave very detailed um, descriptions of Casey's life as a high priest named Rata, who was in Egypt, and talked about all the various rituals and things in the healing temples. Now, when, Trace, uh, when, when Casey went into trance, did he communicate with, uh, with the source all the time? The source would come through him, but what was interesting is the the whole thing was discovered by accident mm. because Casey became ill, and so he went to a hypnotherapist, and right. he went so deeply into trance that he didn't know what he was talking about. So they had his stenographer taking notes of the 14,000 life readings that he gave. And so although he was always communicating um, the messages mm-hmm. of this source, he never really was conscious of it, wow. and he would have to be told about it later. Unbelievable. How did you first become a healer after a transformational trip to Egypt, Shelley? And and I understand you, you had a near-death experience. Yeah, this is, um, I, I guess, a lot of the things that I've remembered lately mm-hmm. um, through writing this new book have reminded me of things that happened a long, long time ago that really I probably haven't talked much about, even in all the times that you and I have talked over the years. But right. Back in 2000, um, amazingly, it was in June of 2000. Uh, normal people don't go to Egypt in June, Rob, but guess what? <laughs> I'm not normal. No, no, um, you're so not normal. There. You're you're special. I'm specially crazy. No, no you're just I special. You're just special. So I went there in June of 2000. Mm-hmm. I landed in Athens first, and that was really the first Athens, Greece. I changed plans to go to Cairo. It was really the first time that I really started having what I would call like a spontaneous past life recollection, just brought on by a place that I had been. And I got to Egypt. It was very transformational. I I started having remembrances, very conscious remembrances of a time when the pyramids were first being built. I was having kind of nightmares. I was really in a state of panic. I didn't even know if I could stay. And I talked myself off the ledge. I flew down to Luxor, and then I had a totally different experience where I just fell in love with it. I wanted to build a house there. I wanted to move there. By the time I came back to Cairo, I felt a little better, and I left. Um, I went to Turkey first, and then I came home. It was a quite an adventure. And about maybe less than a month after I got home, I had a very strange near-death experience 
not from an accident or anything, but I started hearing it was like I, I don't know how to explain it, but it was like I started he- actually hearing the inner voice telling me there was something wrong with my heart. Wow. I was not going to live much longer. And one night I just got up and out of my body. Not Like I said, not, there was no accident or anything, but I went into a light tunnel. I saw some relatives. Um, in particular, the one I remember the most was my grandmother who died just a couple months before I was born. And I was told to come back. I came back into my body called a friend. They took me to the hospital. My pulse was barely operational, but they checked me into the hospital. And after about a 24 hour period, they just had to release me and and they just called it a quote virus. And so then when I came out of that, I started having like, like a huge rush of energy coming out of my hands. Mm -hmm. I was knowing how to do things that were completely beyond my scope of my current reality because I was just always just like a public relations person and a salesperson. So I came back to, I was living in Colorado when this happened. I came back to Texas. The family pretty much thought I'd had a nervous breakdown literally. And so I, I was very sensitive to sound. I I just couldn't go back to work. I decided then to go back to school and I was going to get a degree in psychology probably because I needed a psychologist <laughs> <laughs> but that's another story you know the therapists like to get therapy that's what we do uh, but in the middle of that somebody introduced me to this idea that there was a holistic theology school that was doing more let's call it woo-woo stuff and so I dropped my traditional um, studies and I went off and got the PhD instead and I basically studied energy medicine and during this time, like I don't really remember this. This happened all, you know, between 2000 and 2003. I finally published a book called uh, Galactic Healing in June of 2003, which is kind of documenting um, experiences that I had after I came home, where I started seeing symbols in the stars, mm-hmm. and I wrote them down, and they ended up being tied to Egypt as well. But I never talked about this book because everybody wants to hear me talk about gemstones. So it's just something I put away. Mm -hmm. And many, many years ago, a psychic said, Shelly, you are going to come back to this one of these days. And of course, I didn't believe it, but I guess it happened. You and I have to take our first break, uh, Shelly. But before we go to the break, uh, could we say that when you talked about past life recognition, that we're talking about something that we call deja vu? I call it something different. Okay. Um, but I wrote a, but yes, akin to deja vu, but I think it has a different quality to it. And I've actually written a series of books about it because it is so prevalent. But yes, along those lines, yes. All right, Shelley, please stand by. Exonation, our guest this hour is Dr. Shelley Kerr. Her website is pastlifelady.com. And we're talking to Shelley this hour about her new book that is out. It's entitled Edgar Casey's Egyptian Energy Healing. And once again, her website is pastlifelady.com. And uh, Shelly and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I'm Rob McConnell. Don't go away. It's hard to listen to the news without realizing we're living in volatile, unprecedented times. Yet never has there been such an opportunity to transform the human condition. As old structures fail, where can we find the guidance to co-create a better way? Find Your Path Home is an ever-evolving, leading-edge information, education, and healing resource center designed to support and guide you on your path to unity and enlightenment. Based on sound principles employed by Shaman Worldwide, we provide techniques that can support you through the current transitions, offering online shamanic classes, 
international long-distance shamanic healing sessions, complimentary Mission Evolution radio episodes and Stairway to Heaven TV vignettes, seminars, retreats, and much more. All of this can be found on findyourpathhome.com. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens and they kept repeating to me over and over again, simultv.com, simultv.com. What's simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night, I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. SIMULTV.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about SIMULTV.com. SIMULTV.com. Dr. Shelley Kerr is my uh, special guest this hour, Explanation. We're talking to Shelley about her new book entitled Edgar Casey's Egyptian Energy Healing. It's available on Amazon.com, and uh, Shelley's website is pastlifelady.com. Shelley, just before we went to the break, I asked you if um, past life recognition is the same as deja vu. And um, you said you'd like to talk a little bit about it when we came back. So here we are, my dear. All right, so... To me, deja vu would be if we were sitting in a coffee shop Mm -hmm. having this conversation and we looked around and we said, wait a minute, I feel like we've been in this coffee shop before having this same exact conversation in another time. But it would be still, we've remembered that modern time, that similar time. Mm -hmm. And so that is one, that is a phenomenon. And then there's another phenomenon that Carl Jung mentioned in his writings it's a little bit more obscure it's called anamnesis Mm -hmm. and that would be where the soul just knows where it's been before so if i said to you well i just know i've lived in ancient egypt before i have no reason for it it's just something that i know and nobody i don't question it and so when these spontaneous past life memories begin happening to me um the Egypt one, really, because it happens when I was so young, <laughs> I said a long time ago, uh, <laughs> I, it wasn't in my realm of consciousness to even be able to describe that. But many years later, I had gone on a trip to Key West, Florida, and I became violently ill hmm. to the point where I thought I was having an allergic reaction. And when I left the place, I said, and it's beautiful there. There's no conscious reason for that. But I said, you know what? I'm never coming back here again. And sure enough, I came home a couple of days later, and I was invited to go back there again. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to have to have a past life regression about this. And sure enough, I realized that the place that was making me uh, ill, that I had actually died there back oh in the 1700s. Oh, my gosh. So I did the regression, yes. Mm-hmm. And I returned there, and I felt better, and I was able to be there. And so I started this whole project a few years ago of saying, wait a minute, if this happened to me, I bet this is happening to thousands of other people. So I I coined a term that I call superetrophy that very few people know, but hopefully they will someday, which is a spontaneous supernatural memory that's being triggered by either traveling or it could happen when we hold an artifact or even when we meet someone, but it causes, instead of that feeling of you and I in a coffee shop, it can actually trigger uh, an actual little movie to play in the mind of the person, including myself and Mm -hmm. other people who I've interviewed, where they actually leave the current reality, and they find themselves suddenly looking out their eyes, but they're not in this life anymore. They're in a past life, and it's coming up spontaneously without past life regression, and then that is when the past life regression, instead of you and I doing that for an exploratory reason, we do the regression to find healing about the things that automatically came up in your mind. 
And what I found is that because the society, you know, is teaching us that, you know, when we have weird things happen that we're not supposed to talk about them, that people have this happening to them all the time, but they decided to stuff it down into their subconscious mind and they don't really remember it but when I ask them like sometimes I go well you know what that happened to me but you know what it's going to take me a couple days to even remember Mm -hmm. when it happened to me because I've shoved it so far down I put it away where nobody could find it anymore but it's it's very very common fascinating truly fascinating and and, uh, the people that you meet whether you're giving uh, healing sessions or you know book signings do they come up and you know exchange these stories with you they do yes um, it could be, well, lately, this is kind of interesting. Um, I, I've been out doing healing mm-hmm. sessions with the new modality at Expo. So I decided to sell some little things that I've picked up from around the world, you know, little Buddhas, sure. or little statues. And so it's just like when I take gemstones out, I can stand there and I can just watch people, what they walk up and look at or what they're attracted to, what they want to hold is giving me a lot of information, you know, about where the person's been before. And so sometimes they'll come up and look at a little statue and they'll go, oh, yeah, you know what, this reminds me of blah, 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 or I went to this country, or I did this, or I've always wanted to go to Egypt, or I've always wanted to go here or there. Because I really do believe that the soul is subconsciously being drawn back either by through the gemstones as well, because they come from different parts of the world, Mm -hmm. through little objects or actually physically traveling. We're going to go back to the places where we've been before, to things that are familiar. We want to see familiar people because we're trying to remember the things that we really don't remember so that we can develop as a soul. What is our purpose when we come to this existence, Shelley? Well, I hope, um, and I'd certainly like to see more of this, I hope Mm -hmm. that it's to help others, to show kindness, to rise above our own petty nonsense, to, you know, expand into a bigger vision. Um, I would hope that that's the bigger purpose. And normally in a regression, you know, I do take people into the space in between lives where they do have an opportunity to identify the, you know, what is my reason for being, sometimes it's to learn about maybe forgiveness or, Mm -hmm. or healing or something like that. But a lot of times it is about, you know, because everything is love and, and whatever is not love. So it's all kind of the same thing. It's just how people define it. I think. I was wondering if you could share with us how you were contacted by an alien from Sirius who relate another Egyptian-based healing modality that uh, that you developed in the early 2000s. Yes, this is another uh, one of my stories that mm-hmm. I I really haven't talked much about in through the years. Um, earlier in the earlier segment, I briefly mentioned the book Galactic Healing. Yes. So sometime after I came back to Texas in 2000, in the fall of 2000, worked on my studying, I began seeing... Uh, like I would go outside, I'd be guided to look up, and I would see the stars. Something would just come down, and I would see a symbol in the sky. And so I began jotting these down over the course of some months. Mm -hmm. And then I was shown how to use these, and I created a healing modality called Galactic Healing. I didn't know really what this was. I was taking notes on it. I wasn't showing it to anyone for quite a while. And I was working a lot. Uh, This is back in the days when I used to throw my books in the car and I'd drive around the country. So I left Dallas and I went out to New Mexico and I was going to be a guest healer at a spa in Santa Fe. And on the way there, I stopped at a rest area in New Mexico and I'm born, I was born there. This was, I don't remember where this was though, out on the highway. And I was really tired and I just closed my eyes for just a minute. Nobody was in the parking lot or anything at the time. It was broad daylight, but interdimensionally, I just saw something come in, like into my face I, I don't it wasn't like on a physical level but it was a blue being that has a very typical looking facial structure to like a gray with big brown eyes but it was bright blue like blue man group colored blue and I went, you know and I came up out of this dream state or whatever I looked around there was still no one there and I thought that was weird and so I just didn't think anything else about it I drove on and when I got to the spa I went to check in and say hey I'm here and the girl at the desk went and she looked behind me and she goes she pointed behind me and she said did you know that you have a blue lady who is standing behind you 
And I went, oh my God, you know, I, I guess I did, but I didn't, I thought, I, I thought that was, you know, something I was making up. She goes, oh no, no. She goes, she's here and she's going to be working with you and she's going to be teaching you some things. And I was like, okay. And so this kind of started a journey where I started tra- channeling this being, which is part of the galactic healing book. And I began, um, I don't remember, I was going to the airport, I hit my head on the car door. I mean, it's just a lot of things happened. And I started channeling what healers, a lot more people do this now, but they call it the light language, where I just started this this babbling healing hmm. um, in other languages. And when I would give healing sessions to people, like one man was from Russia, he was Jewish, he told me that I was speaking in ancient Hebrew, you know, but I didn't know what I was saying. It was just coming out and I would speak to certain people only when I was told to. I went out to a group here in Dallas several years ago and I did the, I, the light language for people. But it was still so bizarre. It was another one of those things that I kind of just put away for a long, long period of time. Again, because, you know, I have so many different books, and and so I just kind of go with what, you know, what the audience is wanting, you know. And so it's just things that I've really never talked about before. But now that this new thing has come to me, I mean, there's the energy since that, that modality galactic was developed is totally different now. But those words of that psychic that told me so long ago, look, you know, you've put this away, that's fine, but this is coming back. And when I was talking to the Edgar Casey Foundation about doing this book, you know, I talked to them for a course of four or five years. I kept getting like something was just coming to me. There's a healing modality. I talked to them about it. Well, we're not going to do that right now. Okay. And it may be in another year, I would ask them again and I would ask them again until finally one day there was just this, I don't know, it was like a download. It was like something from the clouds supernaturally came down in front of me. I could see it like a holy formed thing. And I was like, oh, it was a reading. I was looking in the life readings and it just came over me. I said, my God, this is a healing modality. And so when I then finally explained that Mm -hmm. to the Edgar Casey Foundation, they were like, oh my gosh, we need to do this. We're going to find out more about you, the Edgar Casey Foundation. And of course, I want to talk to you about your new book that uh, has just come out. It's entitled Exonation, Edgar Casey's Egyptian Energy Healing. And it's available on uh, Amazon.com. It's by our very special guest this hour, Dr. Shelley Carr. And if you'd like to find out more about Shelley, visit her website, pastlifelady.com. This is the Exon. I am Rob McConnell. And uh, Shelley and I return on the other side of this news break. Don't go away. How would your life change if you could develop the business and personal skills that you need in order to make more money? Do you want to learn how to achieve your big life goals faster? Then go to findhiddenmoney.com and get the Goal For It online course. The course teaches you how you can set and achieve your biggest goals while completely overcoming the roadblocks to your goals so that you can realize your dreams and imagine more success. Go to findhiddenmoney.com. Memorable dynamic presentations are a not-so-secret weapon in the business world. Do you have a powerful message that must be shared, but you haven't found a way to deliver that message? Do you want to be known as a top public speaker who gets amazing results? Are you ready to create and deliver your powerful message? Thomas Hides can help you create and deliver your speech to get the results you desire. Visit IconQuality.com. Did you expect your business to flourish, but instead it plateaued or didn't get off the ground yet? Would you like to achieve massive goals and discover new sources of income within your business? When you're ready to experience that type of success with fast results, Cindy Hendricks is the business coach for you. Her work with entrepreneurs and business owners has been life-changing. To get you and your business where you want to be, go to imaginemoresuccess.com. Has the fear of public speaking stalled your business or personal life? What would you give to develop and maintain supreme confidence? Have an invaluable private program to always perform at your best. Imagine how you would feel. 
You can have all that and so much more today with Thomas Hyde's life-changing course called Number One Fear Unleashed. Visit NumberOneFear.com and be liberated from your fear of public speaking. Exonation. Dr. Shelley Kerr is my special guest this hour. Her website is pastlifelady.com. And we're talking to Shelley about her new book entitled Edgar Casey's Egyptian Energy Healing. And once again, it's available on Amazon.com. Shelley, why is, uh, why is this book, in your opinion, so special, so important? It has to do with kind of where we are collectively mm-hmm. um, as a society. I have been very vocal in the past about being really against technology and what it's doing to people. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, a lot of people criticize me for it, but years ago I had tons of people on Facebook and everything. I just shut it all down yeah. for a period of time because I was kind of disgusted with the idea that that there's so much phoniness. I mean, I hear... You know, people hear me on the radio, and I, I love, like, the Exxon Nation. I'm grateful. But it gets also to the point, though, where some of the people you go, wow, you know what, I don't know these people who I'm friends with. Mm-hmm. I don't know that they share my values. I don't think any of this is real. And now we're seeing, like, the effects of how this is really taking over the society, that we have a higher suicide rate, that yeah. people are, you know, reduced to one-syllable sentences and stuff. And, and we're very, very collectively unhappy and the thing is, is that, you know, I've been teaching all kinds of different energy healing mm-hmm. and over the course of so many years, Reiki is one that I feel like a lot of the exonation is very familiar with because Definitely. it's been very, very, you know, out there in the yeah. mainstream. So, like, when you think about Reiki, um, Reiki in the first level is just teaching the person how to bring energy through. and the second level, there's healing symbols. So this new modality basically if you read the book Mm -hmm. it's going to teach you from start to finish how to do this using a set of healing symbols that in the final analysis um there's a technique i show the reader on how to re-spin the energetic fields around the body we've got the chakra centers the colored energy within but we've got a field around the body that field there's a spinning that happens where you start to spin that field in a counterclockwise direction so that the body becomes more in rapport and alignment with the earth. And so it causes the person to experience a deep sense of peace and grounding. Because the problem is, is that we have got to get back in our bodies. We are not in our bodies anymore. And when I developed Galactic, we had the exact opposite. Mm. It was like people needed to get up out of the reality because they were struggling with physical things. Now they're on Netflix or they're on their phone or they're watching YouTube. They've got to come back in their body and actually be present in their body um, in order to find happiness and peace. And the technique is actually doing that for people. Shelley, they what... don't need to take a class. Shelley, what are the electronics, the Wi-Fi, the microwaves uh, that we're inundated with 24-7, 365, doing to the body's um, auric field? Well, it's, you know, it's destroying it. Yeah. It's weakening it. And we don't really, we don't even really understand the full implications of this. Mm-hmm. Tonight on the news, they actually showed um, this some x-rays they took of kids who were under 20 years old who were starting to develop bone stems in the base of their skulls from you know thumbing and looking down at the phone all the time this is stuff that we should be expecting in your 95 year old grandmother at the retirement home right you know not not in the 20 year old kid and it's just you know i'm sure i you and i have always been on the same page on a lot of this stuff so i know i'm i'm really preaching to the choir on this but something has to be done and, you know, I, I, a certain group of people is interested in energy healing. Th- this book, in a way, I mean, I understand it's very obscure, but, it, but the message is really the fact that somehow 
we have got to put those phones down and we have got to come back into our bodies because that is how we're going to find each other again. That's how we're going to find our health again mm-hmm. and actual peace and happiness. It's not out there. It is inside the body. That's right. You know, and uh, I, I've often I've often said this, Shelley, that the answer to every problem is not with other people. It's in that person that you're looking at on the other side of the mirror. The man in the mirror exactly. has all the pro- uh, answers to your problems. And and when I was a kid, we we didn't have all these electronic gizmos. We had a radio TV at home. But my mother made us do something that I have kept up with my children, my grandchildren. Laura, you know, believes the same thing. We, we say, go outside and play. You know, go outside. Mm-hmm. You know, get you get put your like when people come into our home, they put their cell phones, their pads, whatever they're bringing, their electronic gizmos at the front door, and that's where they stay. You come to visit us. You come to talk. You don't come to text. You don't. You know. You, you, and and I cannot understand for the life of me why the educational system has not caught on to the valuable lessons that you have been talking about for years. It starts with our children. It does, and I've got friends in the who are teachers, you mm-hmm. know, and they are working in classrooms where basically the kids have more rights than the teachers, yeah. and they're not even allowed to touch their cell phones. They're not allowed, you know, they can't take the phone away from the kid, basically, Unreal. Unreal. at least in the United States. It's ridiculous. Well, it's ridiculous up here in Canada, too, you know. I, I remember when I was going to school, my Lord... If you were sent to the principal's office and there was the possibility of getting the strap, that was bad. But knowing the principal was going to call your father, <gasps> oh, wow. Uh-uh. What do you want me to do? How, how, how many uh, stairs do you want me to take my toothbrush to and wash? You know, we don't have this anymore. It's, it's, you know, it seems like it's the tail that's wagging the dog these days. It is. And I don't know how we're going to dial it back, but Mm. we've got to start at least having dialogue and getting going on this. Well, I I think that's what your books are doing. I think the time for your books, my dear friend, is now. People need your books. And I'm so happy that you've, you've come out with your newest book because, you know, we need this. We need to be healed. And, and if you can help people do what you do best, blessings to you. Hats off to you, Shelley. Thank you. You as well. You have been out here putting these positive messages out for years, and the world needs it, and we need it more than ever, I'm telling you. What you're doing is wonderful. What we're doing is trying to make a positive difference. It's so easy these days to be negative. So easy. I agree with you about Facebook. I've gone through Facebook, and if I get anybody who puts a negative posting on, they're unfriended, their post is deleted, that's it. There's enough negativity in the world. But let me ask you this. I I also understand, let me see, uh, that uh, you went to a Buddhist temple, a silent retreat. And tell us about the process mirror, what Casey described from in his ancient time. Basically, it's what we've just been describing. This is so wild that I just got back on my birthday this year from a Mm -hmm. 10-day silent retreat at a Buddhist monastery. This, the Exxon may be familiar with uh, Vipassana. So this is the teachings, the original teachings of the Buddha, mm-hmm. where we're locked up. We can't talk for 10 days. Wow. Nobody thought I could do it, and I did. And during this time, the directions are simple. Breathe in through your nose and observe your breath. And then the theater of the mind begins to bring up all the stuff that needs healing. And during this time... You're getting in touch with the body, and the te- and then you watch a video every night. Of course, you're still being silent, of course. Eating vegetarian food, you know, cleansing the body by the food, cleansing the body by prayer and meditation, and also just being with yourself, in a, you know, turning all electronics mm. in at the door and everything. It was amazing. And the thing is that the whole lesson is that in order to be happy, if you want to be the Buddha, if you want to achieve enlightenment, and find that that freedom from suffering, you know, all we're doing is either we're clinging and grasping at things that we want, or we're, being, we're having aversions towards the things that we don't want, so we have to find a middle ground where we just don't react, 
we don't get too excited or too wound up about anything. We just maintain peace. But the only way we can do that is if we will get back in our body. And even I, you know, I don't sit on my cell phone, but I'm telling you, eight hours a day of meditating, okay? And it took me two solid days. And at the end of the second day, when the teacher on the video at the end of the night finally said, remember, this is not about imagining. And I went, OMG. And I literally, I just snapped back into my body and I went, what? I don't have to imagine. This is so wonderful. I can just be here. I'm not creating anything. You're looking at what is and you're accepting what is. And when a pain arose, that pain would be like so painful. But if you just hang on for a minute, sure enough, the body is shifting and changing every single second that we're alive. So the pain would go away and it teaches you, you know, that nothing is going to last forever. It, this moment is changing. You don't need to get attached to things. And that the only path to happiness is in the body. And so when I came in through the 10 days, toward the end of the 10 days, I started saying, oh, my God. This is exactly what I'm talking about in this book, because Casey describes it. He laid out the whole thing about what went on in Egypt or, or any of these, you know, elevated societies where you would have to clean the body out with food. Mm-hmm. You would do dancing and ritual, and you would do all of this before you ever try to work on somebody else. You've got to work on yourself. Just like that old saying, if you can't love yourself, no one else can. You know, it begins mm-hmm. with you. All right, you and I have to take our final break. Uh, Shelley, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a great pleasure talking to you again. Congratulations on your new book entitled Edgar Cayce's Egyptian Energy Healing. An explanation if you'd like to find out more about our guest this hour, Dr. Shelley Kerr, visit her on her website at www.pastlifelady.com. And her book, uh, Edgar Cayce's Egyptian Energy Healing, is available on Amazon.com. I'm Rob McConnell. Dr. Shelley and I will be back on the other side as we wrap up this hour here in the Exxon. Don't go away. Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. They are here, and they've been here for thousands of years, making their presence known in the shadows. They might be seen by a lonely motorist on a deserted road late at night, or by a frightened and confused husband in the bedroom he is sharing with his wife. But who are they? What do they want? Why are they here? Perhaps most concerning, has the government been aware of their presence all along? The new book by Ellie Marzulli, UFO Disclosure, The 70-Year Cover-Up Exposed, delves into the world of UFOs. Can full disclosure be soon? Order now and receive a free hour and 37-minute DVD on the UFO phenomenon, UFOs Are Real. Get both the book and the DVD, a $40 value, for only $19.99. To order your book and DVD today, go to lamarzulli.net. That's L-A-M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-I dot net. Christopher Fulton is a survivor of the National Security State. All he wanted to do was preserve history when he acquired a Cartier watch from the estate of President Kennedy's personal secretary. But that simple act set off a terrible chain reaction. He was pursued by the U.S. Justice Department and the FBI, thrust into the middle of the U.S. government's Assassination Records Review Board, even monitored and pursued by the Russian government. All because that Cartier watch was the missing link of evidence, a timepiece worn by JFK that fateful day in Dallas, a link resulting in Christopher being incarcerated and attacked for nine years 
Lions because he opened a hidden chapter in history. The intriguing journey outlined fully in Christopher Fulton's memoir, The Inheritance, is available now through Trinday.com or Amazon.com. The Inheritance, Poisoned Fruit of JFK's Assassination by Christopher and Michelle Fulton is a must-read, an incredible tale of how easily our own government can overrule justice. The Inheritance, Poisoned Fruit of JFK's Assassination. And welcome back, Exxon Nation. Dr. Shelley Kerr is my special guest of this hour. And if you'd like to find out more about Shelley, pastlifelady.com. And it's Shelley Carr, isn't it? It's, well, Care. Care? Carr? Okay. Care. Care. Handle with care. There we go. Yes. Okay, so uh, if you'd like to get your copy of Edgar Casey's Egyptian Energy Healing by Dr. Shelley Care. Visit her, um, you can go, go to Amazon. That's the best place to buy a copy of her book. That's Amazon.com. And for more information on Shelly, visit PastLifeLady.com. First of all, Shelly, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show tonight and sharing this uh, fascinating book with us. But you and I were, were talking uh, during the uh, break, and, and this, world needs, this world needs more positive actions by everyone. And... And the example I used was at Christmas time. Everybody is in a is in a happy mood. You've got uh, you've got people digging into their pockets, helping out organizations like the Salvation Army. People are bringing food to the food banks. Other people are bringing clothing for the less fortunate. And, and then come December the twenty sixth, then everything goes back to normal. But those there are still people who are hungry. There are still people who are homeless. There are still people who are sick. What can we do, Shelley? What can, what can your course, your 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 lessons, your energy healing, help us to do in these times where people forget about others? I think we have to go into really conscious, assertive kindness and thoughtfulness towards others. Holding doors, mm-hmm. going out of our way. Yeah. Yes, going to the food bank. This is an everyday thing. There's so much. You know, well, it takes only a few to bring up a lot of negativity. And if you see a lot of the things that go on, um, you just think, what? But you still see a lot of people also doing acts of kindness. And I think more and more people are starting to finally wake up to that, that this does need to be a year-round event and not a -a once-a-year event. And whatever you do, don't believe everything you read on the Internet because the Internet is the world's largest septic tank that has ever been created by mankind. It has more crap in it than anything else. And the sad part is is that those who invented the Internet and those who maintain the Internet and use the Internet for the dissemination of what information they gather through analytics you know, they're making money on your woes. They're making money on your fears. What we're doing is we're feeding the beast. We need to stop that and say, you know what? We've got minds of our own. We don't need to be force-fed. We can make our own decisions. We don't need you telling us where we need to shop. You know, it's it's getting pretty crazy up here in Canada, uh, Shelley. You, you can actually call Walmart up, make an order. They'll deliver it and put the order in your fridge. Oh, Lord. Rob, please don't get me going. That is so ridiculous. Are we really that lazy that oh. we cannot walk into a store? We're not apparently a- we are. Not only to the store, Shelley, we have drive in, uh, drive through coffee shops, we have drive through food vendors all over the place, we have drive through pharmacies, drive through uh, cleaners. There are even now drive through funeral homes. Like, come on. <laughs> Why? But yes, I don't, I mean, having somebody come in and bring my groceries in my house, I don't think so. No. I mean, that could go wrong a yeah. lot of different ways, you know. I, I don't understand it. Um, this, the, I mean, I don't want to go, those crazy kids, you know, but it just seems like the younger generation just wants to wave a wand and have things magically appear. But there's a cost for that, and 
some of the cost, unfortunately, seems to be our happiness. Exactly. And there are a lot of people that I know, Shelley, that refuse to go to the self-checkout counters in the major department stores and food retailers because they're taking away jobs. It's, it's like we're being dumbed down by technology. And if we're being dumbed down, why are we being dumbed down? And what don't they want us to realize? What's behind the curtain? That is the million-dollar question. We act like we're surprised mm-hmm. that we're being surveilled, but we gave them this permission That's a long right. time ago. Yeah. You know, so, pe- people say, well, I, I don't want Big Brother uh, watching me, you know. So, but wait a minute, I'm going to go to the local store and use my ATM card and buy some groceries, or I'm going to go to the airport and buy a ticket, or I'll use my Social Security number to open up a bank account. Whether you want to be or not, you are under... Big Brother's Watch. However, I I look at Big Brother watching in a totally different way than most people, Shelley. If you have nothing to fear, you have nothing to hide. I agree with that. Yeah. Or if you have nothing to hide, you're kind of bored, you know, listening to this. Yeah. Not this, but my daily life, they might be going, oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, like they've got bigger fish to fry. I, I, for one, am happy that they're out there doing this because unfortunately, in the world that you and I live in and the world that you and I love, there are a lot of people out there who will try to harm us all. And mm-hmm. it's these people who are classified by conspiracy theorists as the big brothers who are, you know, part of the new a- new world order and so on, who are actually there for our our safety. I know a lot of people out there in in, in the Exxon Nation will not agree with me on this, but that's how I feel. And then we have the light workers like you, Shelley, who are doing your best to make this a better world. You are a police officer, correct? Yes, that's right. I think that's fascinating. I totally agree with you that if you're, if you're not doing anything wrong, then what's the problem? Exactly. I agree with that. So what's next for Shelly care? Car. Well, I'll be out. Um, I've been doing a lot of shows lately, Mm -hmm. uh, doing energy healing. And then next year I've got a new book called meet your karma coming out from Llewellyn. Uh, It's based on a process I developed that helps people reduce anxiety, trauma, and depression using past life regression. Now, do you also do past life regression, uh, Shelley? I do. Now, can people contact you a long distance and have past life regression, or do they have to meet with you in person? It can be done by phone, or I also do it for international customers via Skype. Oh, really? Because we're still in a room together. I guess we're so, yeah. just kind of in the room many thousands of miles away together. But yes. Fascinating. And and how long do these past life regression sessions last? Um, usually about an hour, sometimes an hour and fifteen minutes. And and if people would like to book a, a past life regression uh, session with you, would the information be on your website at pastlifelady dot com? Yes. There's oh. a session link there. Excellent. Over all the years that you've been doing the work that you've doing as a light worker, somebody who has been out there talking to the people and, and touching the hearts and the lives that you have, has there ever been any one moment that has just sent you back for a loop like, what? Where I just can't believe this is happening. Yeah. I think we're kind of in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> lately, <laughs> the last couple of years, mm-hmm. you're just seeing some of the things, some of the craziness, some of the, I, I think back when I first started, you know, I've mentioned earlier that, you know, the, the energy was just totally different. I think people yeah. were afraid to say things back then. Mm-hmm. And so the light worker was always helping people open up their throat chakra so that they could tell their truth. Well, now it's like it's been over opened <laughs> and people have no civility anymore and they're treating people cruelly. Yes. I mean, it's one thing if you want to say something, but, you know, to treat people with kindness and respect and realize that, you know what, this world would be a horrible, boring place if everybody in the world thought exactly how you think. You know, that's what makes it interesting. We've got about two minutes left, Shelley. What is your final or closing thought that you would like to share with the Exxon Nation tonight? I just... I guess I would just challenge people to put their phones down Mm -hmm. to start. Well, I guess, you know, 
before this book came out, when I was still working on it, I started, I switched gyms. I'm really into working out like every day. And I switched gyms. It was a very difficult thing for me to do because I'd been going to this other place for 20 years. And I started taking Zumba classes, which was mm. dance classes. Yeah. And the teacher would stand up in front of the class every day and she'd look down at us and she'd put this big grouchy face and go, you know, because she was kind of making fun of everybody because we're out there dancing, but we're all frowning. And I started going, oh, my gosh, you know, I'm not smiling. And so I started trying to make myself smile. And I started realizing, you know what, I'm not really feeling that happy. That's why I know if I'm not happy, I mean, I'm always happy, then I know other people are not happy either. And so I think that we have to consciously start looking at ourselves, like we've been talking about before. Am I smiling today? How do I feel today? That's, that's another question that the teachers always ask. How are you feeling today? Mm -hmm. And you go, wow, you know what? I don't feel very good, but maybe if I would stand here and smile, even when I don't really feel like it, yeah. start moving my body around, maybe I'll start feeling happier. And over the course of the year, you know, I just feel like a totally different person than I did. And I just would like to challenge people to think about how you're feeling. And if you're, you know, what, what can you do to find more happiness? I just, I want people to be happy, Rob. I just, I don't want to hear about people committing suicide and being yeah. unhappy. I want us to be happy. I want us to try to be kind and get along. I mean, come on. Well, I think that you are doing that, Shelley. Again, time goes by so fast when you're with us. Please don't uh, be a stranger. Come on more often and visit us and, and help us get more positivity into this world of ours. I will do my best. All right, and Exo. You as well, my friend. All right, Exo Nation. My guest this hour has been Dr. Shelley Kerr. And if you'd like to find out more about Shelley, visit her website, pastlifelady.com. You can book a, a past life regression session at her website. And uh, her new book is entitled Edgar Casey's Egyptian Energy Healing, and it's available on Amazon.com. I'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the X Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I'm Rob McConnell. Don't go away. If you are looking for a safe, zero-calorie, natural option to the harmful artificial sweeteners on the market today, Just Like Sugar is what you're looking for. Just Like Sugar is a wonderful natural alternative for those health-conscious people who choose a calorie-restricted diet with a great, pure, sweet flavor that tastes just like sugar. Just Like Sugar is a great natural option for people suffering from diabetes and may be useful in restricted diet programs where standard sugars are not allowed and does not cause a laxative effect of some other sweeteners. Just Like Sugar comprises a perfect blend of chicory root fiber, natural calcium, natural vitamin C, and Just Like Sugar sweetness comes from the natural flavors from the peel of the orange. Just Like Sugar is a natural alternative to harmful artificial sweeteners and will change the way that you believe all natural sweetener products taste. Just Like Sugar is available at your local Whole Foods markets, Wild Oats markets, Henry's, Sun Harvest, and many other fine natural food stores in the U.S., Canada, and worldwide. They are here, and they've been here for thousands of years, making their presence known in the shadows. They might be seen by a lonely motorist on a deserted road late at night, or by a frightened and confused husband in the bedroom he is sharing with his wife. But who are they? What do they want? Why are they here? Perhaps most concerning, has the government been aware of their presence all along? The new book by Ellie Marzulli, UFO Disclosure, The 70-Year Cover-Up Exposed, delves into the world of UFOs. Can full disclosure be soon? Order now and receive a free hour and 37-minute DVD on the UFO phenomenon, UFOs Are Real. Get both the book and the DVD, a $40 value, for only $19.99. To order your book and DVD today, go to lamarzuli.net. That's L-A-M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-I dot net. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like Exxon, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games, 
No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today.